Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookends and Books. I finished reading a book and I've decided to talk to you about it. So uh, this is Thunderclap, a memoir of art and life and sudden death by Laura Cumming. So despite the last word in the title, this is not a brief memoir at all. This is about art. This is a beautiful book, all printed on glossy paper uh, that you probably can't see. And there are pictures and photographs uh, at regular intervals. So this is a painting by Carel Fabricius. Uh, Carel Fabricius is a painter from the uh, 17th century uh, from the Netherlands and this is the focus of this book. So the author talks about her interest for that particular painter, how she's tried to find him, uh, find about his life, uh, about his art, because there's about a dozen of his paintings surviving today. Um, and she also talks about other painters from the Dutch Golden Age because these paintings have always been in her life and she explains a bit how and she explains her fascination for them. And to me that was super interesting because I do not care for 17th century Dutch art. For some reason it never did anything for me. So uh, the main effect of that book was to make me question my taste a little bit. And I remembered suddenly like that, that uh, we have a museum in Ottawa, the National Art Gallery, which is probably the biggest art collection in Canada, or perhaps the second biggest, maybe there's a bigger one in Toronto, uh, but, but it's a rather big art collection. It does not compare to the Louvre, it does not compare to the Metropolitan Museum in New York, but nevertheless, it is quite a big collection. And there there are, I, I assumed before going, there would be some uh, 17th century Dutch art. And indeed, there, there is. So I went to the museum on Thursdays because on Thursday evenings after five o'clock, between five and eight o'clock, it's free. Uh, so I just went there and I decided, OK, I'm just going to focus on Dutch art. And more than that, I'm going to focus on the type of painting that I use not to like, which is the small domestic scenes and the still lives. Uh, I tend to be attracted to the gigantic paintings and the ones that are um, full of, I don't know, uh, the bigger the better, I guess. Uh, size impresses me in paintings, I guess. But, you know, the big impressive scenes uh, and... I tend to be attracted to those. And I guess it, it's normal if you enter a, a room in a gallery, in a museum, and your eye probably is going to be attracted to the biggest painting on the wall. And I, I never go much farther than that. But this time I decided, okay, I haven't paid for my ticket. It's free. I can use this as a little study and I'm just going to focus on a few paintings. I'm not going to try to see the entire museum. I'm not even going to try to see all the paintings in one room. I'm going to focus on a few. So I found three that interested me most. The first one what, that I saw happened to be um, the one, well, not the one, but uh, happened to be by this painter, uh, The Wit. So it's not, of course, the, this exact same painting, but I happened to be at this very page. Well, not at this very page. I, I was at this very page. So I had just finished reading about The Wit when I decided to go to the museum. And the first painting that I saw when I entered the room of Dutch painters from the 17th century was a painting by The Wit. So of course I looked at it. And then I focused on two others. One was The Lace Maker. So a domestic scene by a student of, uh, of Vermeer, by a student of Vermeer. Um, the name of the painter, M-A-E-S. How do you pronounce that? Mais? 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 M-A-E-S. And then, uh, and then I focused on its still life uh, by, by, I've already forgot the name, uh, but I, I'm, I'm going to show you and I'm uh, the, the, the videos that I took and I'm going to talk over a little bit. Um, so let's do that. This is a sermon by De Witt. It is one of the first paintings that we see when we enter the Dutch art section in the National Art Gallery. In her book, Cummings talks about how happy she is to have seen certain paintings before she has read about them so that she can have her own point of view on them. And in Ottawa, they have a very descriptive, prescriptive approach in the way they analyze paintings. Here they say, our attention focuses on the play of light and shadow through the vast space. And for me, that's not at all what I saw. I saw the characters at the forefront, the mother breastfeeding her child, the dog that was listening to the sermon. So not what I was supposed to see like the curtain or the play of light. 
The next painting I focused on was The Lace Maker by Maes. It was the only interior scene that there was at the gallery. Uh, I said earlier that Maes was a student of Vermeer, but no, he's a student of Rembrandt. And uh, the little curtain above the lace maker intrigued me because it was not in front of a window. It was in front of a painting. And now I'm wondering what was behind uh, this curtain? What type of painting was there? And I also focused on all the little details, the bowl, the calendar, the uh, portrait behind the lace maker, perhaps her husband. Um, and I focused on all of these little things that made the painting alive. The last painting that I focused on was this Still Life with Butterflies by Davids or Davids. I don't really care for still life, so I tried very hard to find something interesting in this one, and I found a little caterpillar that I suppose is about to become a butterfly. Um, I also noticed how translucent some of the fruits were, and I thought that was very well painted, and that was a good technique, I guess. I would not be able to do that. Ottawa being Ottawa, there's of course an explanation that uh, this represents the passage of time with fruits that are ripe and some others that are rotten. But what really interested me was all the little critters that we saw, the ladybug, uh, the caterpillar, and then there are ants uh, crawling on the grapes and little fruit flies on these peaches. Um, and then there's this one that, is it a fly? Is it a bee? Um, I don't know, but I thought it was uh, the, funnest, the, the funniest part of this uh, still life. Of course, when I exited the gallery, I stopped by the gift shop and there was a lot of books, including a table of books at $10 each. So I had to buy a couple of those. Uh, so the one that I bought is Anthropocene by Bertinsky, Bajwal and the Pensier. So this was an exhibition, a multimedia and multi-artist exhibition, trying to show how um, the impact that human beings have on the planet and on the environment. And the images are just stunning. So this is a mine. The, 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 the picture on the cover is a mine. Uh, so you have another example here. Um, so of course, these uh, being art books, there are just stunning pictures. Um, and these are all images of uh, human intervention on the planet and the consequences of uh, the human interventions. Um, and in this one, there's quite a bit of text, so there will be quite a bit to read uh, and not just images to look at, even though the images are, are just gorgeous, really. And the other one is still its beautiful wrapping paper. Um, there will be a lot of glare in this one. It is called Gold and Silver, and this is, I'm going to open it with you, uh, it is pictures, just uh, old photographs and daguerreotypes, I don't know how to pronounce that in English, the garotypes of uh, the uh, gold rush uh, to the Klondike in 1849. Uh, was it 1840? No, it was much later than that. It was in the 1880s. Anyway, the gold rush. So this is almost pure pictures. There, there is very, very little text and there's a bit at the end, so <laughs> I'm trying to peek just to make sure that you can see something. So it is a gorgeous book. Um, so the, the only bit of text is at the end, and they explain to us how uh, how the the images were made and the technique behind it. And there's a bit of information. It's in both official languages, so both the English and French. Um, and so the, the, there's nothing more Canadian than that. Um, yeah, and, and I can't wait just to take my time and look at each of these pictures. Uh, that this, Each picture tells a story. <laughs> there's so much glare. <laughs> uh, so each picture tells a story and um, yeah, it, it's going to be, it's going to be fascinating to look at. So uh, that, that was my evening at the museum. So uh, I, I keep saying museum, but I don't think it's a museum. It's a gallery. In English, it's a gallery. In French, it's musée. In French, it's musée des beaux-arts, so it's a museum. But anyway, it's an art museum. Uh, so uh, thank you for coming with me to the art museum and uh, to the National Art Gallery. And uh, I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine.